Hello. Welcome to Lincoln Christian Church's online worship service today. We're glad you've joined us. Before we get started, there's a few family business items we want to make sure you know about. Next July, the student ministry will be taking a mission trip in the summertime. The mission trip is called Work Camp for Lincoln. It's a great opportunity to partner with what God is doing right here in Lincoln and a chance to help our 10,000 Reasons know Jesus. The trip is for current 8th through 12th graders. You don't want to miss it. To learn more, please come to the informational meeting October 26th at 6.30 p.m. Next Sunday is Time Change Sunday, so before you go to bed, make sure to set your clocks back one hour on Saturday night. Also starting next week, we will be in a new series for four weeks in the life of Jonah. It's a grown-up story about a city that God wanted. It's much more than a children's story. Ron is really excited to share new findings about the city of Nineveh and Jonah. Please plan to join us. Today is a very special day for us here at Lincoln Christian Church as we celebrate the Lord of the Harvest and the Harvest of Talents. Harvest of Talents is a great ministry here at Lincoln Christian Church that throughout many events through the year, but specifically one in October, raises funds all year long for feeding hungry and hurting people all around the world. It looked quite a bit different this year because of COVID, but we are very excited about all that God has accomplished through Harvest of Talents this year. So as we prepare to sing, as we prepare to share in communion together, as we give our tithes and offerings, and as we hear from the Word of God, we are excited to be able to also hear the totals for the 2020 harvest and also the 37-year total of Harvest of Talents as we give the check today to Randy Jones, who's representing IDES today. We're excited to be able to share today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have to worship you today. We give you everything that we have in worship, and we are excited, Lord, uh, all that you will do in and through our hearts today. Have the Holy Spirit speak to us today. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heaven thundered, and the world was born. Life begins and ends in the dust you form. Faith commanded and the mountains move. Fear is losing ground to our hope in you. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name they shall be done. chains undone sin defeated Jesus has overcome mercy triumph when the third day dawned darkness was denied when the stone was gone unstoppable God let your glory go on and on things in your name they shall be done unstoppable god let your glory go on and on impossible things in your name they shall be Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable, nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable, we'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable, unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. 
power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. He chose and see. On this Celebration Sunday, uh, like many of you, I probably think about some of my favorite foods of Harvest of Talents. Um, I think of the cinnamon rolls and pecan rolls, the soup. Uh, 
fried potatoes. One of my favorite is the walking tacos that, Ty, that Ides always brings. But really the point of Harvest of Talents is the food that's on the other end. Those who are going to receive a meal, perhaps their only food of the day. And all that we do on this end is to deliver food to the hungry in Jesus' name. You know, the Lord's Supper is largely about a meal. And if you join us here on Sunday morning in the facility where we worship, we have these communion packets. And I'm going to peel off the cellophane and hold the bread. And if you have some bread prepared, hold it in your hand as we talk about the meaning of what Jesus said when he told his disciples, this is my body. I think about what Jesus did in that body when I hold this bread. He was 100% divine, but 100% human. And he showed us how to demonstrate the character of God as he lived in his body. He proclaimed the kingdom of God to anyone who would hear it. He fed the hungry. He gave love to those who were unlovable. And he broke down barriers and provided hope to the hopeless. And he even learned obedience by the things he suffered, surrendering his own will to the will of the Father while he was in his body. He trained disciples, invested his life in others so that the kingdom of God would continue long after he was gone. And I think of those things when I come to the scripture that we're going to look at. Ephesians chapter 1. And before I get to verse 22 and 23, know that Jesus, the same power that raised him from the dead, Paul says, I want you to know that power at work in you. And he goes on to say, God placed all things under his feet, being Jesus raised from the dead, and he appointed him to be head over everything for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So now the church is his body on earth. Now it is we, the people of God, who demonstrate the character of God in our human bodies. Individually and collectively, we do what Jesus did. And isn't that the point of Harvest of Talents, to feed the hungry as the church, as his body? Now we learn obedience. Now we train disciples. Now we offer hope to the hopeless and proclaim his message to anyone who will listen. Now we are his hands and feet, carrying out the will of God, surrendering to the Father as his body, the church. So as we partake the bread together, let's remember his body and how he lived. But let's also remember our church, his body on earth today. Let's pray. Father, as we ingest this bread together, we take on the power of Jesus Christ in our own lives and we desire to be his body today. We remember his life. We remember all that he did for us. And we want to imitate him and be transformed by his power so that we can be his body today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, when you join us here on campus, we pull back the top here and we partake together of the cup. After Jesus 
finished with the meal, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, the new covenant poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. And we participate in that together as the body of Christ. We do the offerings a little bit differently here, as you do online as well. Uh, we have some drop boxes in the area, but we have ways to give online. And to give you a quick update on where we stand from the eldership, uh, through the month of September, because of your faithful giving, we're pretty close to our budget, about 97%. And our expenses are also lower because of the pandemic, so the income and expenses have matched up really nicely. So the church is healthy, but it's all because of your faithful giving. You know, this ministry only continues because of your faithfulness to Christ in your giving, your trust in this ministry. And by putting God first in your spending plan, you're saying, I trust you, Lord, to take care of everything else I need, and I trust that this ministry will carry out, your, carry out your will. So thank you for your faithful giving. And as we approach what is going to be now our Harvest of Talents offering, I'll just tell you how amazed I am at your generosity. In the month of October, I have seen countless sacrificial gifts as God has taken your talents and you have given your money to support this ministry which reaches around the globe. So on behalf of our church, I want to say thank you for your giving and may God bless you as you give again today. Let's pray together. Lord, I'm lifting up all of those who are making gifts today to this ministry in your name. Effectively, they're saying to you, God, use this money as your body, as the church, to carry out your ministry and to do your will. So I pray that you'll bless those who give and bless these gifts that they might do your work across the globe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Like you, I have really missed seeing all of you at our beloved Harvest events due to restrictions from the COVID virus. However, hunger needs are greater this year than ever in our 37-year Harvest history. And so your church staff and your Harvest ministry team were not canceling Harvest. That was never an option. We were very grateful for all the technology talents that came forward, the new ideas, all the patience, and all of the sweethearts that helped us have an offering. So on behalf of the Harvest Ministry team, it is my real pleasure and honor to thank you, thank you for your trust, your enthusiasm, your participation, and most of all your prayers that have made it possible for Lincoln Christian Church to have an offering today. And on behalf of the children that you have bought meals for through this offering, their flags are before you. Thank you on their behalf. Pat? COVID-19 and the resultant pandemic had a profound gut-wrenching effect on the harvest of talents. It is with that thought in mind that we are extremely grateful to present an offering today to International Disaster Emergency Service. On behalf of all of the hungry and hurting people in the world, we are humbled and honored to present this check from the 2020 Harvest of Talents for World Hunger. Thank you, Pat.
blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hello, Lincoln Christian Church. For those who do not know me, my name is Rick Jett, and I'm the Executive Director of the International Disaster Emergency Service. I want to first of all thank you all for your uh, commitment to feeding hungry people. I know this year's been different, it's been difficult uh, because of the pandemic, but you have persevered. Your creativity is to be commended, and your perseverance definitely it's been a great example to all of us. Your faith also is there. You believe that God is going to use you to make a difference, and He will. I want to let you know that this year, yeah, it's been difficult, and we have had more than we've ever had, I think, of requests to feed hungry people. A lot of people, because of the pandemic, have not been able to work, and thus they're not able to buy food for their families. And so the requests have come to Ides, and fortunately God's people have been very generous and we've been able to meet those needs, but we are still very dependent upon the Harvest of Talents funding to continue those projects and the requests that we have for people that need food all the time. So thank you for your efforts. Thank you for your flexibility. Thank you for your perseverance. And as I was thinking about our faith, I think about the story of we have in the Gospels when Jesus was teaching the multitudes. There were over 5,000 men, and so with that, there were probably that many women or children or more. And he told the disciples, you feed them. And they go, Lord, we can't do that. We don't have enough money. We don't have, the, you know, they had all the excuses. But then Andrew came up with a little boy. And this little boy, he had five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus said, that's enough. And so the little boy gladly gave what he had, and Jesus blessed it. And then the disciples distributed it. And amazingly, everyone had enough to eat, to the point of where they were able to gather up baskets full of leftovers. You know, that's, that's the kind of God that we serve. And that's what we do every year with the Harvest of Talents. We bring... God, I don't know if I can do this or that, but here's what I can do. Here's what I have. And you have gladly given that, and God is going to bless it, multiply it. And beyond what we could even ask or imagine, our God is going to answer our prayers. So thank you for your efforts. Thank you for your gifts. And we're going to stand by and praise God and celebrate today his great greatness and his faithfulness. Thank you. I'm the project manager at IDES. I handle the communication between our partners on the field and our board of directors. I coordinate with uh, our partners all around the world. Uh, we're involved with hundreds of projects that help during times of disaster and hunger. And, in, and even when there's not uh, disasters in a certain area, we'll help with uh, development projects and evangelistic projects, um, doing all kinds of stuff. I make sure our projects go to according to plan. I coordinate with the, the partners, the forwarding agents, uh, working out the details, making sure things get from A to B, and make sure that everything gets done. On a typical day, uh, I'm, I'm on the phone a lot, doing a lot of emails, uh, lots and lots of spreadsheets. Um, or I'm on the field uh, visiting the partners, learning about their culture, um, trying to find out um, how I, we can best serve them and take care of them. Um, I've, but sometimes I'll find myself on the back of a motorcycle speeding through downtown down in the cities of uh, in India at breakneck speeds. And so my job is, is, is boredom or sheer terror. And there, <laughs> there's no in-between. It's, it's just one of those things, uh, boredom or just sheer terror. It's, uh, it's a crazy thing to do, but that's, uh, that's, what I, that's the kind of stuff I get to do. But honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing uh, to be able to connect brothers and sisters from all over the world to brothers and sisters here in the States. 
uh, doing all kinds of stuff. Um, it's a blessing to take things that are bad like disaster and work uh, with believers to glorify God through what we're doing. Have you ever been overwhelmed by, by a gift that you weren't expecting? Um, maybe it's uh, uh, something as fancy as like a new car or some jewelry or something like that. Maybe you cried about it, or maybe you uh, just didn't have words to express yourself. Um, my wife uh, had, was playing something without my knowledge. We were visiting some friends and, and went out to uh, have coffee, and my friend had taken me out to coffee, and we were walking back to the church, and, and we got into the church, and um, uh, it, they uh, we walk into the room and everyone yells surprise and and I look I, I was confused because I wasn't expecting that and I looked to my friend to say surprise because it, this was in the middle of July and it was a surprise birthday party but it wasn't for him it was for me my birthday is December 23rd um, so it was very surprising to have a surprise birthday party in the middle of July but I was I didn't I didn't know what to do I was very surprised and so maybe you've had that before uh, where you've uh, had some kind of a gift that you've been uh, overwhelmed with. Um, I, I sometimes get tunnel vision in my job do, working with these uh, different projects. Um, it's common for us to do, to help with large sums of money, to help with different disasters. Like we could help in the Philippines after a tsunami, um, and that could cost around $50,000 rebuilding homes, helping out with clothing, helping out with food, um, or doing a food distribution in Myanmar, um, with refugees, uh, d- moving food into 30 different villages uh, can cost upwards to around $30,000. Or fixing a, a damaged roof in Florida after a hurricane, that, that, that could be up to $10,000. Those numbers are extreme to me, uh, personally. I get, I get overworked when my oil change uh, costs a lot of money. But for, for IDES, those projects are just a portion of what we did last week. And so when I uh, see these things, it's, just, it's overwhelming to me, and I, but I still forget sometimes because uh, I deal with those numbers every day. I w- a couple of weeks ago, I was talking to a minister that had put in a request to help out a family after a terrible fire in Oregon. I'm sure you heard about the fires in Oregon, Washington, and California. The family that he wanted to help was, they go to his church, they, they've lost everything. Uh, he showed me some pictures, and the house was just a, f- a foundation uh, they left one car there, and the car was burned. The tires were gone. It was just, it was, it was outrageous. And uh, I remember explaining to him how this would work, how we would help, how would we kind of work through the details of how this would be. And, and I, he broke down. After I told him the amount that we were able to help with, he broke down and got choked up about it and got me choked up about it uh, just because um, he was able to help. He was able to, to pass on that blessing uh, to help people. And I just, it, it's happened a couple times in, in the last few years, and it, it always takes me back when things like that happen, but it's, we're just overwhelmed with that blessing. I want to talk about uh, uh, Nehemiah, and, and he was overwhelmed with a task. Nehemiah was, was given a task to, to rebuild the wall in Jerusalem, and I, this, this passage of Scripture, it's a great passage of Scripture. The whole book is great. Um, and I know there's a lot to come of, but it kept coming up these last few weeks with me. And I kept seeing these different parallels between Lincoln Christian Church and, and the ministry of the Harvest of Talents. And I kept seeing these different parallels between his ministry and your ministry. And I just want to share with you just some of the things that I got to see uh, with this Scripture. We're going to go uh, really quickly through them, but I just want to... Uh, Maybe you have more insight, you'll, you'll be able to glean from this or see from this. Um, but I wanted to kind of work through this. So I'm going to be uh, Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 2 and 4 there. I'm going to keep asking these questions. What did Nehemiah do? What did Nehemiah do? So there in verse 2, he asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who had survived the exile, and concerning Jerusalem. And he said to them, the remnant there is in the pro- in the province who have survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down, I wept, and I mourned for days, and I continued fasting and praying before God of heaven. See, Nehemiah had this task, he had this worry, he had this concern, and the first thing that he did was pray. 
And I, when I read that here recently, I thought, you know, that's what had to happen in Lincoln when that first idea of what the, the task that needed to be done to feed, to feed children, to feed people that were hungry, uh, there had to, it had to be bathed in prayer, had to be taken care of um, in prayer and brought to God. Uh, I see Nehemiah's character as he is concerned about his people. He's concerned about what has gone down and he's concerned with how can we make this better. And so he's coming to God and saying, what, what can I do? What can we do? And the same thing here, as, as, as you've prayed and your ministry has come about, uh, I know you've asked God, what, what can we do? Uh, Nehemiah didn't rationalize uh, he didn't rationalize it away. He said, I got responsibilities here. It's so far away. It's, not, it's something I can't do. Um, and the same thing, you didn't do that either. You didn't say, these people are so far away, I can't do anything with that. There's no way that I could do anything. Um, there's no rationalizing it away. I, there's a thing called the bystander effect. We see this in disasters and, and, or with, uh, with extreme emergency situations. You'll have 50 to 100 people uh, seeing an emergency situation, but nobody doing anything because they feel like they can't do it, feel like that somebody else is going to take care of it. Uh, it's a very dangerous position to be in, but Nehemiah did not do that. He wanted to see what God had in, in store for him. So again, he prayed. He fasted and he prayed. Um, in chapter 2, in verse eight, 17 and 18, what did he do after he prayed? Um, he saw that the Jerusalem was lying in ruin. The gates were burned. Um, and he said that he told, and I was told, I told them, verse 18, I told them of the hand of God that had been upon me for good and also of the words that the king had spoken to me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for the good work. So as he prayed, he felt that not only was uh, something needed to be done, but he was going to be a part of what is going to be done. And he had to push people and spur people on to do the same thing. Um, I know the people that first started the Harvest of Talents, they felt that burden and they realized, well, God is not asking me to find someone else to do it. God is asking me to do it. God is putting me in a position to make something happen. Um, and it takes that frankness, that openness, that just sheer honesty that this has to happen. To, make, to do what God wants us to do, we have to rebuild this wall. To do what God wants us to do, we have to feed as many people as we can. All right, so it's amazing to see that, that he felt God moving to rebuild and he got people involved uh, to do it. Me, Nehemiah gave them a renewed hope by calling them to a plan of action and inspiring them with his personal testimony. He did things to move the people in a way, and we have to do that. To do what Lincoln Christian Church has done for so long, for so many people, you have to have that, that desire to, to move in a way that's going to continue to inspire people. In chapter 3, uh, the people work systematically on the walls. This is what, it's just uh, the building work is described, and the workers are named section by section. The point of this account is to show that the people as a whole responded to Nehemiah's challenge and believe that God will give them success. Um, it's, it's a really kind of a cool way to show how things are done. It's a, it's a remarkable list of individuals who share the responsibility of the work. Priests led the way, but the people from all walks of life joined in, truly making it a joint effort. And that's, that's true of this. Uh, I know things have changed, and this is a different harvest season than we're used to, um, but over the years, and even this year, things had to be done. People had to do a whole bunch of tasks, and we all had to do it together to make it happen. And to do it because uh, we had to. There, it, was, it was a necessity this year, maybe more than ever, uh, with so many people hurting. Uh, so what did Nehemiah do? In chapter 4, uh, verse 18, this is not what Nehemiah did, but what could have been done to him and to the people. Verse 18 says, And each of the builders had his sword strapped at his side as he built. The man who sounded the trumpet was beside me. They were ready for opposition. They were ready to fight, uh, to fight against what, what uh, could be people uh, in opposition to them. Um, there were people that didn't believe that the wall needed to be rebuilt. They thought it was silly. They thought it was something that didn't need to happen. And it's 
I'm sure everyone's been sick of hearing the word pivot and all the different changes we've had to make uh, because of COVID, but we've had opposition. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean just because of this season, this year, that there's going to be opposition. There's going to be opposition in, in all types of ministry. Our mission partners on the field see this every day, whether it's the government, whether it's their neighbors, whether it's their family members. Uh, there's always some opposition or even our, ourselves getting in our own way. Um, things are going to try and stop us from fulfilling God's plan, from stopping us from helping and doing what's right. Uh, we have to do what we can and be prepared for that kind of opposition. Uh, the man who sounded the trumpet there at the last uh, bit of verse 18 uh, was to, to push and let people know that we're still fighting and that we're willing to do what it takes for the cause of Christ. And so sometimes we need to be ready. We need to have our trowel in one hand and a sword in another um, and be ready to take on whatever God has called us to do. So what did Nehemiah do? Chapter 5 and verse 3, there were also who said, who said, we are mortgaging our fields, our vineyards, our house to get grain because of the famine. And even during this time, this whole task of rebuilding the wall, there still was people that were hurting and needed help. And so Nehemiah did what he could to help them. He didn't know whether the famine was because of natural reasons or political or economical. Uh, he just knew people needed help. And we deal with that with our disasters and we deal with that even with the harvest of talents. It doesn't really matter how it happened, but people still need help. They still need the rice. They still need bread. They still need uh, the things to help their families. And so it's very important uh, to take care of them and do what we can to make sure that they are being taken care of. Uh, we appreciate our partners on the field doing all that, um, going against the, the opposition and making sure that the people that do not have a voice um, can have a voice. Um, as I close here, I, I didn't want to come and preach a message um, to spur you on to, you know, to do the Harvest of Talents. You guys have been doing that since I was little. Um, but I wanted to just share some of what I thought was some parallels to Nehemiah's ministry and your ministry, and really just to say thank you. Um, I want to move into to Galatians uh, 6, 9. Now, this is one of my favorite verses, um, mostly because just like there's always going to be hungry people to help and to feed, uh, with this, there's always disasters that are going to happen. It's not if, but when in, in my line of work. Well, we work with so many people that are doing ministry and then a hurricane comes or doing ministry and then a flood comes or doing ministry and then there's a famine. Um, we have so many people that are willing to do whatever it takes and we have to continue to spur each other on. So uh, I'm just going to read Galatians 6, 9 here. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those belonging to the family of believers. Now, I've read that verse many times. I've needed it to, to push me on through the next of that disaster, the next disaster. It doesn't seem that we don't, at Ides, we don't really have like one disaster and then it's done. It seems like one happens and another one happens and another one happens. Hurricane season's rough on our ministry. Um, and then there's all the disasters that are happening overseas that really nobody ever talks about. There could be flooding in Myanmar, um, and nobody really even know it. There could be things going on that, does, that doesn't make the news for one reason or another. So we can't become weary in doing good. But I get stuck on those two, that repeating word good. And I, I looked it up years ago to kind of see, and I realized it actually is two different words. And I'm not a Greek scholar by any means, but it was easy to kind of see that these two things uh, mean two, they're slightly different. And it's interesting to me as, as we're looking at this and, and thinking about our ministries, uh, what, it, what does that mean? So the first good, we don't want to become weary in doing good. Uh, this is uh, kalos. It means useful or suitable. It's a, it's a functional kind of good. Um, uh, if you look in Matthew, it's the same kind of word, the good fruit and the bad fruit. And while we're speaking about fruit, jams are good. Um, playing basketball is good. Going on a bike run it, or bike ride is good. Um, those things are, are good. And the second kind of good there, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. 
agathos. It's more about people. It could be a simple term um, or uh, re- relating to a person or as complex as God's will. So my son is good um, and God is good. Um, agathos implies a relationship with someone. Um, the works of God are good and the people of God shall do his good works. Christian deeds become good when they are exercised in response to the direction of the Spirit. I, always, I just like that. The, the verse uh, comes more alive to me seeing the fact that we have this functional good, this tangible good, these things that we use to move towards being better, um, that good, the good that is actually more about people and relationship. Now, I didn't grow up in the church. Uh, I got invited to, to a, a backyard football game that happened to be held at a church. Uh, do you remember the, the overwhelming gift you were thinking about? Now, for me... Uh, having, uh, going to the, to the football games and enjoying that was a tangible good thing. I enjoyed being with my buddies. I enjoyed eating the, the food with the youth minister. Um, but that moved me to another thing. That moved me from a very tangible, ordinary thing like a game to, um, to a good thing, a holy thing. Um, it moved me to a relationship with Christ. Now, the relationship we built uh, with the student minister and with the church there um, moved me from that. So I can't, I can't uh, see a backyard football game or even a football and not get a little bit choked up about what, I, what that means to me. Um, it's moved me, this very tangible thing, moved me to something very holy. And I know there are people out there. I know there are people in other countries that are getting this good food. It's, it's good, but it's, it's tangible, it's, it's temporary. It's going to move them to a place that's holy. It's going to move them to a relationship with Christ. And so with our partners, with our Harvest of Talents partners, they're taking this rice, they're taking this bread, and they're taking something that's very just physical, and they're going to move it to something that's going to be something that's even better, to be good, to be holy, um, so what are the similarities between our ministries? Nehemiah, Galatians, Ides, Harvest of Talents. God has given us a task. It's challenging but rewarding. We will have opposition, but we need to remember God is with us. We, there's always people to be fed, but doing that and doing other ministry will always create life change. So on behalf of the Ides ministry, on behalf of all the people receiving food all over, all over the world for many, many years. I just want to say thank you for your ministry. Thank you for the church. Uh, we thank you so much. Greetings from Tanzania, East Africa, where over 150 orphaned or impoverished Maasai children's lives have been transformed through AIDS food support. These children live in the bush where they walk hours to school and even further for medical care. At home, sometimes, actually most times, they receive only one meal a day. These children are malnourished and struggle in their physical and mental development. But through the partnership of IDES, these kids are provided a healthy breakfast and lunch every Saturday at their local church and monthly nutritional supplements for their entire family. Uh, This program, we seek to meet both physical and spiritual needs at the same time. So while these kids are getting good nutrition, they're also getting tutoring every Saturday, learning health lessons and Bible stories at the same time. The community leaders of this area who are not Christians, they give glory to God for the increased welfare and care for these children. Um, These kids who were once marginalized, Now they're cared for and valued, and that is all thanks to the partnership of IDES.